All right. Hello, everyone. So I am Dr. Tushar Mehta, and uh, I suppose that it's already seven or two. We have uh, more than 250 people who have already joined in right now, and the numbers are shooting up. Well, I think uh, it is. Ex it was expected, and I knew that this is going to happen. Uh, today is a very important day for all you viewers, all you listeners here, because I mean we have a legend. We have the maestro of a subject called pathology. the person who has been uh, a pioneer and a trend setter in the field of pathology not for some years not for some you know duration but it is more than probably the age of many of the people who are watching and listening to us right now so he has been a person who has written a book who has changed the dimensions of the subject pathology he has i would say widened the horizons of thinking of undergraduates as far as pathology subject is concerned all medical undergraduates have read his book and even post graduates also go through the book without taking any further time i would like to bring in front of you not only our guru but the pan india guru of pathology dr harsh mohan himself he is a noted speaker author leading pathologist who has been holding the baton of pathology for all of us for such a long time and uh, i mean it is more than a pleasure for me to have him here on this platform so first of all i would like to welcome dr harsh mohan on this platform sir sir a very very warm welcome sir a very very warm welcome to you sir uh sir thank you so much for coming out of this platform i'm really honored and humbled by your presence here there are a couple of questions that i've already gathered from different people in fact the questions have already started flowing in uh okay so i have already compiled a couple of question which i'm asking you on the behalf of entire country uh, the entire medical fraternity to be very honest and uh, this is a pleasure for me as well sir there are a couple of questions uh, that we will be starting with so first question by dr shagun good evening everyone good evening sir and uh, thank you so much sir for coming on to this platform pathology bites we all feel so humbled Uh, by your presence here so sir today i'll be asking you certain questions uh, not only on the behalf of uh, pathology bites but also on the behalf of the entire medical fraternity uh, which i am uh, representing right now taking this interview so this is my uh, utmost pleasure and yes it was probably one of the things that was always in my bucket list uh, when i took pathology uh, on the first day so sir uh, coming back to the questions um uh, my first question is that uh, uh, why a uh, pathology like i mean uh, what prompted you to take pathology uh, post graduation back in uh, 70s or 80s uh, hi everybody good evening uh, tushar and uh, shagun before i answer that uh, it's a honor and a privilege to be coming on this platform which our young friends are uh, running for quite some time with a very uh, strong passion and uh, motivation uh, i must congratulate both of them uh, they have been uh, and uh, they they are very actively involved in academics uh, although they have been in uh, uh, private sector who says uh, uh, it's only the institutions uh, which are running academics both of them have been running it for quite some time and uh, uh, one thing which i may say before i start answering your question uh, i was trying to think about it uh, what are those rare example where brother and sister are running uh, this kind of thing or they have been uh, depicted in this way uh, ever in our mythology and i could only think of uh, the temple at uh, puri the jagannath temple at puri which is famous in the country and all over the world for being a temple where krishna balram and subhadra the two brothers and a sister are depicted together uh, i uh, happen to attend uh, i was invited uh, for a oration there uh, way back in 2008 and uh, uh, the people there or uh, gave me this as a memento in 2008 if you can see that yes. the ram krishna and uh, subhadra which are depicted here uh, in this uh, uh, silver plate which they had uh, given 
So I could think of that in a mythology where brother and sister are so much attached to follow a passion which with uh, uh, they are pursuing. And uh, I must compliment both of you before I uh, start answering on that. Um, yeah, uh, let me get back to the question. You said, why did I pick up uh, the quality? Uh, well, I want to say right in the beginning that I want to be very honest and candid when I'm answering your questions. And uh, the first question is somewhat uh, complex in the sense and it may surprise uh, many who are listening that I chose pathology for not love of pathology for but for love of my life. Oh wow! I was. <laughs> <laughs> we want to. Be I was in surgery. Okay. Uh, I was in surgery way back in seventy six, seventy seven, and um, I was working with a famous uh, professor of surgery, Professor S K S Maria. Yes. And um, my senior at that time, EBJ senior at that time, was uh, Dr. Sham Singla, who happens to be chancellor there in Gurgaon, where you guys are based. Yes. Um, he was one year senior to me, and I had joined surgery, was working there. But then uh, I got a job in uh, pathology as a demonstrator and co station. I was in surgery and moved to pathology because that gave me a job. Um, which was better paying than uh, working as a resident doctor in surgery. So I requested my professor that I want to be relieved and I want to move to pathologist. He motivated me quite a lot. Why don't you continue in surgery? Surgery is uh, so very exciting and glamorous. Hush, you will make a good surgeon. You've been doing well. What do you want to do? I said, um, uh, I want to marry my girlfriend and her parents will marry her somewhere else. <laughs> um, if um, I don't have a job, I'm, I'm not having a job. I was paid 350 rupees uh, as a resident doctor in Celsi. Mm -hmm. The job in pathology as a demonstrator was getting me much more, about four times uh, so. So it was with a lot of persuasion and uh, haggling with uh, my chief for in surgery that I was relieved and I moved to surgery. So it was a passion at that time of a different type. But I pursued my passion in the profession subsequent to that. Once I joined pathology, I developed passion for that profession. And I would say, if your passion and profession become the same, there's no looking back. You are always looking forward. So I followed pathology as my passion in my profession and I didn't look back. So that's how with the story of joining pathology way back in 77 uh, when I joined pathology. Uh, yeah. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. That's really an insight today. And uh, I must say that this uh, ideology of passion and profession will go deep down in our hearts. Well, I have another question. Shavun, please. Well, I'll, uh, during this journey, I was helped quite a lot. I would say by people who were in pathology at that time. They were uh, people who were uh, role models. And, uh, you know, to uh, mention some of them, like Professor Kusum Yoshi was a young lecturer at that time. He later became uh, head of pathology in PGI Chandigarh. Okay. Uh, she was working as a lecturer there when I was a demonstrator there. And likewise, there was Dr. Uma Singh, who was a professor in uh, yes. looking after hematology. So she was a role model, and we had Professor T.S. Jaswal, uh, who was an anthropology and was uh, the person with whom I worked uh, later years also for quite some time. Unfortunately, we lost in early. These were some of the role models with whom uh, I was able to learn pathology when I joined in uh, you know formative years. You know when you start uh, pathology after a gap of. For well, you know, a few years of having learned pathology at undergraduate level, you are at sea when you begin. So it's totally new. In fact, as an undergraduate, you don't know much what pathologists do. You only know, know about your slides and classes which uh, pathology uh, pathology take. It's only after joining pathology you realize that uh, pathologists do much more than taking classes. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful, sir. All right, sir. That was uh, quite enlightening. And I'm sure all the listeners and the viewers of Pathology Bites must be taking down the notes from the legend himself. So, sir, I would like to ask my second question. 
uh, that as an undergraduate student, like uh, back when you were in your second year MBBS days, uh, how much uh, did you like pathology in your college days? I mean, uh, was it your first choice uh, or it was a kind of subject that you were obsessed with? I mean, uh, we all read your book, but the bigger question that the country would want to know that which book you used to read? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's interesting, interesting uh, because, because uh, in seventies, uh, when I was, I, I wish I had taken out that book. It is still with me, which we used to read. Uh, <laughs> got to do that uh, if uh, I had known about it. We were reading boys uh, pathology way back in seventy three four when I was in the second prof um, of MBBS uh, in PGM Ms. Rotak, and that was a master book. It was a treat reading that book, learning from that book in the flowery language which uh, William Boyd had used in his textbook was masterpiece, no doubt about it. That was a treat. Everybody during that era uh, used to read uh, Boyd's. I mean, my times, you will know, all of them were reading uh, Boyd's. That was the only book. And we used to love reading it. It was very, very interesting and treat to read that book. Um, Having said that, we always as undergraduate students used to make notes as well because Boyd's was a beautiful book to learn from, but um, the system of learning in our country and assessment or examination in a country is such that uh, you have to retain and reproduce. It's not, uh, you know, the way Western countries go, where right from uh, beginning of joining their, you know, MBBS, which they call as MD in America, uh, is done by, uh, you know, uh, answering MCQ. So you don't have to write sentences or paras or essays on a topic. You know, that's what I mean. You hope, I hope uh, the listeners understand that. System of uh, learning and reproducing, retaining, is different in our country. So we used to make notes uh, at that time as well. Uh, so that was uh, what all of us were doing, notes from the book, notes from the class. But we were always following Boyd's textbook of pathology. Boyd's pathology was the master book at that time. But unfortunately, uh, Boyd died uh, in 76, I guess. And uh, the edition could not be revised after that. The last edition is what we read. Uh, that's when it ended, uh, and uh, then other books like, uh, you know, Robin's Pathology Basics and uh, Anderson's Pathology, and many others came up at that time. But our time was Boyd's time, which lasted for a good five decades, I would say. Boyd's time was up to about 50 years so when people were reading Boyd's. Uh, wonderful. Okay, wonderful, sir. So now that uh, for the first time the country has got to know that uh, Dr. Harshman, so the author of Harshman's textbook of pathology, used to read Boyd's uh, book of pathology. So, sir, I, I want to ask that how did it come to your mind and you started of uh, like write, thinking of writing a book? I mean, sir, what was the first thought that came to your mind? What was that? How was that? And uh, what you did after the thought? Um, you see, um, the uh, authorship in itself started uh, sometime in the late 80s uh, when I was a uh, reader in pathology at PGIMS Rohtak. And the first edition of the book came in uh, February 92. Uh, uh, precisely on 29th February 1992. Uh, that's when uh, the first edition came. I happen to keep this book with me, which I may like to show. Uh, this is the first edition. You can see the paperback uh, of that book. And, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, in maroon color, single paperback, and all black and white uh, is what we had at that time. Uh, that was the first edition in, on, which I saw the copy on 29th February 1992, which means it's been uh, there for more than 28 years. Now, um, the thought of uh, writing the book uh, began first by becoming a successful teacher. Okay. Uh, that was more important before I could think of anything like that. 
uh, I had been into teaching from 1977 onwards. If I may uh, recall, when I joined pathology, uh, first thing which uh, or first class which my professor at that time, Professor G. C. Malhotra, gave me was uh, teaching undergraduates uh, urine examination. That's the first class uh, was assigned to me, physical, chemical, microscope examination of urine. And I was given about two, three weeks time prior to that, I was conveyed this uh, when I was working, at, when I just joined as a semester. Now, at that time, um, this is one class which is very descriptive in demonstration. All this practical class, when you teach the students, it's very detailed and very long the way you teach the students. I started uh, preparing that class in all earnest, made notes from a variety of sources, and compiled uh, very good notes for urine examination, and then learned more of it. Because I decided in my own mind that a teacher who takes notes to the class for teaching is not going to get as much respect if I recall when I was a student, I would also not probably give as much respect to a teacher who is carrying notes in the class uh, for teaching that, uh, you know, you don't develop that kind of confidence. So therefore, that's the first promise I made to myself in the first class itself that I should prepare the best possible notes and learn it. And that's what I did. Learned it well and then taught the students extempore without any help. Uh, okay. There were no PowerPoint, there, there were no overhead projector also at that time. We used to have blackboard and chalk for teaching the students. We would write you know, difficult uh, words on the uh, board and students are taking down notes as you are teaching during those era. Okay. Now, that is how my teaching started because uh, I felt that teaching is a serious business. It's not something which can be taken casually and therefore it's uh, important uh, to, you know, do it well. Once you're doing it, do it well is what I learned during that time. So between 77 and before I started uh, writing the book in late, maybe about 88 or so when I started doing it, I had been teaching for about 12 years in, um, you know, medical college Rotak during those times. I had risen to the rank of uh, reader at that time when I started authorship. Um, but I found during those years that I was teaching as a faculty after demonstrator and I became a faculty that students were liking the way I was teaching and uh, they used to take down notes if I was teaching them GI system uh, and next year I was teaching the party watch list system you know uh, these students would photocopy, you know, but we used to call them Xerox at that time. They would Xerox the notes of GI pathology of previous year, which I taught. And uh, Jan Book Depot in uh, Medical Mode yes. would make photocopies <laughs> and will sell, <laughs> sell the notes uh, to students. Uh, this is her small notes of uh, GI pathology, which she taught last year, and now is teaching cardiovascular. And next year, if I'm teaching kidney, they would take down notes of, uh, you know, cardiovascular system like that. So I got this feedback uh, that uh, these notes are in circulation in this copy. And I thought to myself, uh, what I was teaching the student, which they take a sacrosanct uh, uh, word of mouth, which students take down as notes. There are a lot of transcriptional errors when you are speaking and what they're writing. There may be, you know, transcriptional error increase, decrease, and decrease, increase can happen when they are writing down notes. I felt, and secondly, I also felt that when I was uh, preparing for a class for teaching, probably I didn't do the best. I did well, all right, but I can do better. I thought about it. Why not give them the best? And that's what I uh, start initiated me into writing. You know, why not do the best? by consulting whole lot of sources and prepare something better than what I was giving them uh, in the classes. So that's how it started. So it started in, um, you know, about 89 or so. Uh, and uh, uh, during this journey, I was helped uh, by some of the former students also. One of them I can relate uh, is um, Dr. Sanjay Sangwan who is a senior consultant in uh, Long Island, New York. Uh, he was very good in drawing. 
you know, when the teacher is teaching in the class, he will make a, you know, portrait of the teacher. He was so good. And he was brilliant. He was very hardworking and, uh, you know, sharp. He would spend a few hours and learn everything so well. I happened to learn about him uh, and he started helping me in making some of the drawings for the book. And many of the drawings in the first edition of the book were prepared by him in black and white in pencil and uh, broker pen, which was used for black and white. And uh, they were colored later and then transformed and everything. So, and another friend whom I recall is uh, Dr. Uh, uh, R.L. Ishtujani, who later became director of National Institute of Communicable Diseases, who, you know, who was a big help to me for initiating me into writing and uh, persist with it, uh, that we should complete it. So, that's how it started. Uh, the authorship started and um, it's easy to start, but uh, it's a big job uh, to finish it because it's a big project and the book is incomplete till you've written the last word, including the matter on the outer back. So, it requires a sustained uh, effort and hard work. The rest is history, so that's how it started. But I must say, so this book, uh, which I have shown you just now, the first edition of, uh, you know, I knew it was going to come up in your discussion about how it started. Hmm. And uh, this book in paperback probably had good content, but was not produced uh, from a top level publisher. It was published by from a, you know, small time publisher, forward publisher, it was uh, a small time publisher, Nancer Kelly. And second edition onwards was uh, picked up by uh, J.P. Brothers uh, Medical Publishers, who have done an excellent job in the last about uh, you know, 26, 27 years, uh, ever since uh, I've been associated with them, with not only this book, but uh, other offshoots of this textbook, also for dental students or you know, paramedical students and uh, practical or etler, so on. So it keeps me busy with all those. So that's how the journey started. I'm sorry, the answer has gone too long. No, no. This is uh, so intrigue and uh, I mean, I'm just enjoying the journey of, you know, the how you mentioned all these people who have been a pioneer, who have been instrumental in, you know, making this pioneer version. And uh, I will always remember that, uh, you know, uh, the way you said that a good level of teaching is something that is very much required to start authorship. You should be able to know what to convey before you just, you know, go on to write a book. Well, that lesson is, I think, for me, and I will uh, try to invest that before I start writing anything. Thank <laughs> you so much, sir. Yes, Shagun, next question. Yes, I, I just want to thank the stars, the almighty and the destiny that, sir, you had that thought and probably that thought turned into a revolution today. Yes. That uh, we are blessed with you and the book you have written. And uh, so just you mentioned, uh, e even if I remember, my uh, first topic and my first postgraduate seminar was on uh, physical and chemical examination of your <laughs> <laughs> That's so, interesting. What a strange coincidence. Yeah, and I, I remember and I referred to your uh, practical pathology book. And <laughs> honestly, uh, sir, that was a savior for me at that point of time. And I could prepare my seminar and the class as well from that very beautiful book. So I, I, I really want to thank you for giving us this gem to us. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. But let me interject here with one more line. Uh, that what I learned as a demonstrator for urine examination, I remembered that for you know all these uh, more than 40 years now. Uh, I learned the most difficult of the tests also, including for, you know, porphyrin or red sinitrate tests and, uh, you know, all other uh, ingredients which are involved or chemicals which are involved in different kind of tests or bilateral. I remembered them off and also. That was the outcome of, you know, a conscientious teaching. And I'm sure you must have also, once you learn it, to teach you remember it for a long, long time. Yeah. Teaching is very good learning. Yes, sir. Very good. So, uh, thank you so much, sir. So, sir, another question that uh, uh, you know, I've started very early in my career with my channel Pathology Bites. Uh, I don't know what is the uh, future holding for me right now, but uh, uh, I want to ask you, sir, that uh, when you wrote that book, uh, probably when you were writing the first uh, couple of pages of that book, did you ever think about it that this book will be mentioned in the history as a landmark of pathology, like forever it will be imprinted in the history of the medical science and the medical fraternity? 
It's not at all. Sorry. It was not at all like that. It was on the contrary, I was quite unsure that, uh, you know, um, uh, this venture will be successful. And uh, there was apprehension that it may bring embarrassment to me that, uh, you know, what does he think of himself? He thinks that he can be an author. Now, of course, we have many young authors, even post graduates are, uh, you know, uh, giving out their experience in the form of producing books for MLE or. PG entrance, and um, uh, I'm very happy that uh, you're doing uh, running a very good uh, uh, forum for teaching undergraduates as well as uh, interacting with the residents, which is very, very exciting. But our time, um, you know, to put it uh, bluntly, I was uh, on the contrary quite unsure, and uh, in my heart, I was afraid. At one point of time, I had thought of uh, dropping it midway, and that was because one of the um, you know, pioneer teachers in pathology was also coming up with the text of pathology during that time only uh, from the leading publisher in the country. Once I came to know about it, um, and that teacher happened to be my examiner during my EMD exam. Uh, you know, when I was writing, I, that was uh, late 80s, and I appeared finally in 1980. So, 92 is the time when the book was produced, which means. Uh, Many years prior to that, he was my examiner in MD. So he was that kind of towering figure, and um, I felt that uh, you know this is uh, this book is going to come from such a towering person. And uh, I was encouraged by my friend again, uh, Dr. Ratanlal Ishujani, uh, who was later director of National Institute of Communicable Diseases. He told me, "Harsh, you do your job. Others are doing their job. Yes, there are." You know, um, chemist shops in a row hmm. in uh, a market, or ladies tailor in a row uh, in a market. Everybody does his work. It doesn't mean there is one ladies tailor, the other one doesn't get the work. Or if there is one chemist shop, the neighbor doesn't get it. You do your job. They are doing their job, and rest is for you know readers to decide which one does well. And this is what happened actually. I was a reader in pathology uh, in a relatively, uh, you know, uh, I was not in the central institute. I mean, Rotak uh, was the place where I was working at that time in the middle level. And, uh, you know, Rotak has produced some of the best people in the uh, country, no doubt. But still, uh, it was not a central institute uh, like, you know, in Chandigarh or in Delhi or Mumbai and things like that. And uh, I was not um, at the top uh, level uh, or, uh, you know, at the, at the uh, institute itself or uh, at the national level. But uh, I think the first edition, although it was not produced well, but probably had good content. Uh, that's the feedback which I started getting within a few weeks or months of, uh, you know, the first edition. And uh, then, um, you know, it was taken over by... Uh, JP Brothers, who did not uh, spare any effort in uh, using the best of the production, you know, they have done a remarkable job uh, in what they have done in uh, several editions so far, yes. that's the latest one, the eighth edition, yes. um, and uh, they, their production uh, house has been remarkable, and uh, they've also uh, come up uh, with, uh, you know, Foreign language edition, eh? for example, Spanish uh, language edition uh, by same author, and uh, I can't uh, know anything, but as uh, you can see, everything is in Spanish. Uh, is, but the book is translated from English language to Spanish uh, by Hasmon. Uh, I mean, that's uh, very, very fulfilling when I look back. The JPs have done a remarkable work. Uh, we've, uh, you know, Traveled together and grown together, I would say. Mr. Witch and me have traveled together all these uh, uh, about uh, three decades um, since we started our journey in this book. And uh, we've grown up together. We are both same age, actually. Okay. <laughs> Good friends. <laughs> great, great. Okay, that was quite informative, sir. I'm sure the viewers and listeners of Pathology Bites are getting the true insight about how the legend started his struggle into writing this book, how the feelings have gone into this book. Uh, sir, my next question is, 
uh, you have mentored hundreds and uh, probably like thousands of students as pathologists and lakhs of them have read your textbook and have been taught by you. So what do you think, uh, what is the first quality required for being a clinical pathologist or uh, being a pathology resident? Yeah, it's very satisfying. When I look back uh, all these three decades since uh, the first edition came and, uh, you know, since then if I uh, uh, may roughly uh, estimate over a million copies of the textbook may have been sold, leave aside the book for dentistry or other parameters, that's been very satisfying uh, when I look back. Um, and uh, the other thing which I um, uh, have seen in recent time, in the last about uh, five to seven years is that uh, many people uh, will, as parents, will come forward and say that, uh, you know, I had read your book, book and now my son or daughter is reading uh, your book. So, two generations, it's gone through two generations. So, it's very, very satisfying and it gives you great amount of, uh, uh, you know, feeling blessed, I would say that uh, I feel quite uh, blessed uh, with this kind of love and affection from uh, people. Um, you know, um, the main quality I would say is uh, uh, that, uh, you know, for a pathologist, as you know, or there are roles as a uh, teacher, as a, as a diagnostician, as guiding uh, for the research, most standards, and when you grow up in position, you also have administrative role of the right types. Now, you have to divide your time uh, accordingly, and on this side, you are also doing authorship of the type which I was doing at that time, and not only, you know, stopping at uh, one, because uh, you can't uh, just ask on the glory of uh, what you have uh, done one time. So then it becomes a, you know, one time show only. You have to maintain that and pursue it and take it further. So that's that's uh, very important. And for that, I think uh, the guiding principle, I would say, uh, is hard work combined with uh, attempt to perfection. Okay. There's no shortcut to hard work. You may do hard work, you are likely to succeed or you may not succeed. But if you don't do hard work, you are not likely to succeed at all. Uh, it's a fluke if somebody succeeds without hard work. That's rare. Uh, and you can't do that fluke again and again. And the other thing which I learned, and I have followed, I'm not preaching. I mean, I'm not a motivational speaker or anything like that. And I've told you my weakness and my strength and how I started uh, as a, you know, passion for something else than pathology at that time. Um, incidentally, the girlfriend uh, is my wife for 41 years now. <laughs> the girlfriend for 46 years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I learned it early on. Uh, trying to do it well is a bottom line. Hard work combined with Attempt at perfection. Whatever you do, do it well. It's better to say no than to do it badly. So I think uh, that's very, very important. When you do anything casually, you are not likely to succeed. You follow a shortcut, you are not going to succeed. So hard work combined with an attempt to do it well or attempt to do it with perfection. You know, I always uh, draw a lot of happiness when I complete one edition of my book or a new book. I feel I'm the best because I try to do it well during that time. But then when that edition starts going to market and uh, one first copy which I see, always I keep it with me as my copy for markings. I start marking it from the day I see the book and I find mistakes in it and I find new insertions to be put into it. So I try to do it well in that time and space of that edition. But there was scope of doing better. And that's what I try to do with every successive edition. So uh, you try to do well or try to do perfect, but there's no end to it. You know, this in Mr. Bill's uh, language is like this. Every time you sweep the floor of a room, 
you will find some dirt coming out of it. For sure. You know, you then uh, sweeping out the floor in a room, and you do it again, you'll find some dirt coming out of it. It's like that. You go through the book again, you find something which you feel you can do better than that. So you can't harp on the glory of one time. You continue to do well and as perfect as possible, and that requires a lot of hard work. I repeated these two things: most important ingredients which are required for being successful in um, any venture. And I can say, from my experience, that is important. Wonderful. Quite, quite. Uh, I mean, enriching in knowledge also, sir. I have a couple of questions from uh, the live audience also, but I think uh, we will cover those questions. Like there is mm -hmm. somebody who is asking about prospects of cytogenetics in future. Dr. K. Goel has asked, uh, particularly doing this. So we'll cover into that. Okay, Shivam, next question. Uh, so thank you so much, sir, for such a valuable advice for all the pathology residents. So my next question, actually, uh, this question is from a third-year resident of pathology from Mulana Azad Medical College. So the question is, uh, how do you think that some students uh, who want to take up pathology uh, because of their unconditional love and interest for this branch, but uh, they end up taking some uh, a clinical branch because of peer pressure? So do you think that this branch has lost its charm or it's just that the motivational level is not enough? And I am uh, asking this question on the behalf of a third year resident uh, who didn't mm -hmm. comply with the family or the society and always wanted to take up pathology and took it. But uh, still there are many people who do not take up pathology and they instead take up a clinical branch thinking that uh, pathology is more of a paraclinical thing. So sir, I, uh, I want to ask you because uh, personally I'm, I'm like uh, being very junior to you but still I feel that it is the basic pillar, pathology is the basic essence of medicine and surgery because this is something through which we can do a horizontal and vertical integration. Uh, what is your take on that sir? Yeah, I think uh, this is a very important and interesting question. Uh, yeah, of late, uh, there have been, uh, you know, uh, the merit for pathology during uh, PG counseling has been going down for the last few years, ever since PG seats have increased. And uh, that is combined with the relative paucity of jobs, although this is a very competitive uh, uh, world, and the best ones uh, uh, survive. That's how it is. Uh, the survival of the test and survival of the best is the bottom line. There's competition in every field now, um, every specialty as well. And uh, you can make a success of yourself in any field. Uh, there's no doubt. Pathology, uh, I've been, um, maybe I've been blessed, but I have never regretted joining pathology ever. I moved from surgery to pathology. I've never regretted it. I narrated this uh, just because you answered me. Uh, you, um, you asked me this uh, uh, question. But otherwise, I never have ever any regret of coming to pathology. Um, I agree that this has uh, a, a, a insight of all specialties and, uh, you know, you're dealing with all aspects. Leave aside uh, the treatment part, but you go from, uh, you know, beginning to the end, including complications and everything. But yes, there has been paucity of job, but greater problem has been underemployment because of more number of people becoming available. Uh, this has been largely because uh, institutions have been asking for more number of PG seats uh, just to uh, satisfy the requirement of the institution because the institution says that, uh, you know, you have X number of professors, so you have more seats. They are not looking at the demand of uh, particular specialty uh, and uh, the production according to that. They are not looking at that. With the result that uh, there has been a, a, a lot of underemployment, I would say, rather than unemployment. Underemployment means that uh, some of the pathologists are employed on part-time basis, uh, you know, for smaller remuneration and uh, you know the young uh, upcoming pathologists feel that this is this the kind of job I'll be doing. So they are doing different uh, type of work than what they were trained uh, during their post station. So that's uh, something which is disheartening. But then the positive aspect of this is that there are such large number of newer avenues 
uh, in pathology as well. If you look at it, uh, when I see young uh, people going into uh, teaching through digital forum or going for reporting through digital forum and uh, you know going for super specialization into variety of uh, subspecialties whether in India or other countries and then uh, come back with so much of confidence and uh, they are so productive. So uh, I think uh, it applies to all specialties, not pathology only, but there is scope of doing well. Only thing is you need to persist with uh, what you want to pursue and you need to do it um, with the uh, hard work and continue. Enjoy doing what you are doing. I mean, that's important. Uh, if you are doing pathology, you should enjoy. don't uh, think that uh, I've been forced into pathology when you are doing residency. You should enjoy doing that work uh, is more important. Uh, and then at the time when you are in the practice of pathology, uh, you try to hone your skills more and more and become unique, different. Um, you know, somebody becomes a renal pathologist, somebody is known as a neuropathologist, and somebody goes uh, across and starts doing transplant pathology and so on and so forth. So, variety of sub and there's no looking back for cytology. There is so much of work going on in cytology, especially in this country, which has got a unique status all over the world. So much of cytology being done in this country and uh, also contributing to, uh, you know, uh, scientific uh, literature on this country on cytology. So there's no looking back uh, if you continue to do better and better and own your skills and uh, go for variety of I mean, you need to be innovative. You guys are innovative, I would say. Uh, Shagun has been innovative in starting a forum at a young age. This is innovation. I see many other people. Somebody who is a gynecologist is uh, started, uh, you know, a uh, forum for teaching on uh, pathology or all other specialties as well. So authorship or digital teaching or super speciality practice or improving your skills and all those things are you have to think out of the box for doing well yeah thank you so much sir sir there's something that you know i have always believed like coming from a family of doctors my dad is an ent surgeon so i have realized uh, I, I would say it in hindi that scope uh, branch mein nahi insaan mein hota jo us branch ko karta so, so, you look at uh, dr indra b singh's book on anatomy yes professor indra b singh yes. the pioneer teacher in anatomy yes uh, he was our teacher and uh, his books were masterpieces and they are still uh, doing well. Uh, yes. There is no more, but uh, his books are doing so well. And he was a great teacher. The kind of teaching he used to do, he was only into teaching. We are teachers as well as diagnosticians. Yes. You know, I am attached um, after my retirement to a corporate hospital as a diagnostician to do diagnostic pathology as well, besides authorship or teaching and all that. But, uh, you know, specialty like anatomy doesn't have uh, those kind of um, add-on things. But um, you can make a success of yourself, uh, like you said, in ENT. Look at um, the master teacher in anatomy. We learned so much things. Uh, he helped me quite a lot in authorship also, by the way. Thank you. So there's one question that I would want to take live. This is a question from Dr. Datta. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is scope of research in pathology in India. Yeah. Uh, there are limitations for uh, high-end research in our country because of infrastructure constraints. Uh, although some of the top institutions in the country are doing pioneering research. If you look at uh, places like um, or the Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, or PGI Chandigarh or Sanjay Gandhi Postgraduate Institute or uh, some of the top places in Mumbai like Tata Cancer Hospital, they are doing pioneering work in research as well. Uh, but we know that we have infrastructure constraints in our country. This is in general, but within pathology, there are so many subspecialities. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, uh, activity on research going on in some specialities. Some of the things which are done from India only, like uh, as I said, cytology one, which has uh, you know 
come to the world forum from this country but cytology is more often morphology okay histopathology is morphology coupled with a large panel of immunohistochemistry we have limited panel some of the institution have uh, more panel but not only that there is so much of molecular uh, biology and cytogenetic integrated into classification or prognostication of uh, many tumors and histopathology so there may be some constraints on that the cytopathology certainly has done um, uh, wonders uh, we have a very large panel of immunohistochemistry and uh, for uh, molecular biology and cytogenetic in the lab with which i'm test that the onquest uh, uh, laboratory they have a very large panel so um, of late uh, they have been trying to you know compile the data which they have accumulated uh, etc so there is scope of doing research in some of the top level institutions uh, where there is good infrastructure that's what uh, i can um, tell you the kind of autopsy work which is going on pgi is unique in the world no where else it's been done and that's the kind of uh, pioneering work which they have been uh, producing and publishing at world forum so they are leaders uh, in autopsy all over the world not only in india so there is so much of scope of doing uh, work on this country pathology as well okay well that was an insight even i was not aware of it yes sir sure. next question yeah uh, honestly uh, before asking my next question i want to tell you sir i am uh, still in that awe that i am talking to you live thank uh, you uh, because uh, my love for pathology uh, the way you said i i never regret that i took pathology because my love for pathology is because of you and your book uh, back from my second year days until my post graduation and now also Uh, I just love that book, and I'm really thankful to you that you gave that gem to us. Again, I want to say that, and I really love this field, and that love that cropped in me back in my second year days was just because of this beautiful book that you have given to us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I feel blessed by you know love and affection of uh, people, and that uh, motivates and persuades me to do more and more and better and better. I would say. More and more means more books and better and better by successive edition. Thank you so much for all this. That's very very satisfying. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So my next question is, uh, how do you see uh, the scope of pathology in clinical career? Uh, like why I'm saying this because I'm assuming that many budding as well as studying pathologists must be listening and watching this interview, and they wish to see uh, like five years ahead how they will be having their. a uh, professional educational and a uh, financial satisfaction so i'm asking this question because i, I want to brief everyone here that uh, you have not only started the department of pathology in gmc chandigarh but also at present the clinical head of pathology in paras hospitals panchkula that is a corporate hospital so sir so, uh, you are a perfect example of uh, uh, academic as well as entrepreneurial skills so nobody will be better than you to guide all of us uh, so that is why as i want to ask this question there is one live question also from dr uh, gur arpan bedi uh, mm-hmm. i think uh, dr sab is a pathologist uh, himself or herself entrepreneurial opportunities in the field of pathology along with academic excellence yeah let me answer the let the this question from dr bedi first uh, entrepreneurship in pathology uh, i think uh, uh, there is more and more scope for entrepreneurship in pathology or uh, in clinical and cytopathology histopathology has a lot of constraints in uh, you know diagnostic pathology by an individual um, you know you require more experience maybe at times you need to go across um, for another opinion as well so histopathology in the beginning of your career after your md uh, is not uh, unless you have support base uh, in the city from somebody where you can go across this test case which is what you should do one should be very honest about it uh, so uh, but entrepreneurship in applied uh, pathology that's uh, in pathology and uh, that includes hematology and um, cytopathology has great scope they they are doing well and uh, for that you need to you know have uh, kind of uh, image guided uh, psychology as well 
uh, that's that's also important uh, because otherwise you're doing only you know slides prepared by others there is a big uh, advantage in cytology uh, in the sense that uh, the procedures especially the fna procedures are done by the pathologist himself and gains uh, a first hand uh, knowledge about the patient and his uh, symptomatology or you know clinical examination and uh, doing fna yourself uh um, so therefore um, uh, rather than getting slides from somewhere and then reporting is not as good idea as doing it yourself and also collaborating for image guidance and coupled with that is hematology and clinical pathology and for histopathology i think it's important uh, that you have support base also in the uh, city whether from institution or from some more experienced person uh, that way that's the bottom that's the um, answer to dr bedi's question now coming back to question which uh, dr shamun now uh, has raised uh, that was about uh, you said students right uh, at different level post undergraduates post graduates and practicing pathologists is that right that's yes, the question yes, yes sir right right uh, my message would be that uh, for undergraduates who are pursuing uh, you know learning uh, in pathology uh my message would be that uh, whether you attend a class or not because i have been teacher for um between 77 to 2050 that's close to 40 years 38 years 38 uh, odd years between 77 and uh, you know 2050 um i always felt and um, some of my former students may remember it also when i asked a question at the beginning of the class to reconnect to previous day's class the student will get up uh, and say sir i was not present in the class yesterday <laughs> and my spontaneous uh, counter question would be but it doesn't go out of your syllabus mm. if you were not present in the class yes. so my first <laughs> uh, message to undergraduates would be when you attend a class or not because there have been a tendency for students not to attend all the classes you know they attend classes of their interest depending on the subject interest them or not or teacher interest them or not and they try to comply with the guide uh, i mean the uh, regulations of medical council and they also try to attend as many classes as they require some of them start preparing for mle or pg entrance and they think we can spend our time better in library than to listening to this kind of teacher some teachers i mean not all yes. some, uh, i never had this problem yes, yes. but <laughs> i would say to undergraduates of all types toppers average to which all of us belong mediocre mediocre students all of us belong to that uh, toppers and uh, uh, below average that regardless of you attended a class or not please read uh that topic or lecture which has been taught in the class it's very important to have continuity if the continuity is broken you lose a connect to what is going on in the class if you miss a class and go after a gap of two classes there was a wedding in the family or somebody was sick or whatever reason and then you go back you are totally disconnected it's very important to stay connected and for that you should read whatever has been covered in the class they will never be ever um, looking back for such a student who goes back and reads whether he attends a class or not because you know nowadays the times are different our time was reading from books or preparing notes now they have learning material from variety of sources right. you know there are so many books there's the internet there are forums there are digital apps available there's so many ways of learning for students they are enriched and they are much smarter but it's important to stay connected with the classes is my message to the undergraduates to post graduates who are pursuing pathology Uh, i can say it uh, for post graduate in pathology and also it's applicable to other resident doctors uh in pathology most important thing is to make your observations independently when you are seeing slides uh it's important to make your independent observations and subsequent to that go through from the book about the difficult case 
and discuss with your friends but don't get biased with what other person is showing you you know um, eyes don't see which mind doesn't know you need to read also the mind will know if you you know have knowledge so you need to read but you trust your eyes first and be independent in making your observations microscopy is all you know image based study an image based study is interpretation based on your knowledge combined with your observation so this is very important to make independent observation i've been going as examiner to all the institution including the best of them this is the message based on my experience of dealing with pathology residents all over either or uh, as their students or their as their examiner to make your independent observations and then go back discuss or read from books uh, to you know uh, add to your knowledge and then go back to slides uh, is uh, the other thing then our uh, practicing pathologists uh, there and as i said i think that's an answer uh, my you know answer to question to dr baby for practicing pathologists i think that's what i need to convey to practicing pathologists that they can be enterprising in variety of sub specialties as well yeah. alright sir so we have one more question yeah please yes yeah, sir so uh, now so you have mentioned about the like about the corporates so so how do you see the role of corporates in pathology or in the entire hospitality sector uh having worked in uh, government institutions for good about 38 years and now been in corporates for about a few years um i would compare uh quality and quantity quantity yeah so uh, in government institutions we have huge volume of work there is a uh, big a uh, quantity of work although we have teams of people in the departments uh, but then there is huge volume so you get a tremendous exposure to um, your skill uh, during working in uh, good institutions where there is more material and uh, those places where the material is not adequate i think the students uh, are quite enterprising i mean i'm talking post graduate students they are enterprising and they go across to other institutions uh, to learn or they go to you know forums or apps to learn more and more but um, nothing to beat uh, seeing the slides glass slides and more time but i would say seeing the glass slides yourself in the microscope uh, is what is important now corporates have a uh, advantage in uh, you know uh, pay for the services you know there is quality yes. uh, but pay for the services so those who can pay for the services uh, they get uh, high quality work um, i can say it on the basis of my experience on uh, what we do in corporate is producing you know um, best of the quality output of our report based on uh, you know uh, cap guidelines um, you know that's that's uh, what we follow the uh, american pathologist guidelines is what we follow for producing the reports and um, we go for the entire spectrum of um, isc profile of panel which is required and sometimes cytogenetic or uh, quantitative phase or whatever required uh, we will do that uh, uh, for a case uh, and uh, or molecular cytogenetics or whatever is required or film or um, you know immunofluorescence <laughs> everything whatever they require that is done but there is a price for it so you get quality and you pay for it so corporates have the quality but um, uh, there is no complimentary service there <laughs> that's how yes yeah. so no. working in government institutions we gained huge experience uh, because the volumes are enormous but uh, uh, there are constraints of variety of types so uh, therefore whether there's a bit of the infrastructure or uh, spending because of after all health spending of us know it um, by the government is limited so um, i mean services are provided combined together by corporates as well as the government yeah, that's it well i must say sir you have seen both the words and managed them so well it, I, i i don't see many people doing that 
I mean, both the medical college uh, era and now, you know, working with a. But I am working in corporate, uh, not for big money. I'm still. <laughs> I don't mind with my professor. Honestly, I would, I, I would like to use this platform to tell many people that people who have worked for more than two decades in a government setup, they find it very difficult to adjust even in a corporate setup. I mean, I have seen that with some of the professors pre previously. So when I. Of course, everyone knows that you have written such a magnificent book and everything. But when I was trying to find out more about you, I got to know that you are working in a corporate setup. So I was astonished because people are not able to, they're not, they're not able to gel up in a corporate setup once they've spent maybe 10 years or 15 years or 20 years in a government medical college. So this quantity quality thing that you told is excellent. It's very good. Yeah. yeah. You see, everybody, everybody decides, decides for himself what, what you want, want to do. Uh, after a first innings, um, you know, there are my friends who are working in an uh, institution as the professors or directors after their first innings is equally good. I'm not belittling anybody, but I chose for myself to be in corporate because I wanted my freedom and, uh, you know, limited time for diagnostic, limited time for my uh, academic work of um, teaching or um, going across as a salary or devoting time for my authorship or pursuing other passions besides all this, whether it's gardening or music or uh, something else, uh, travel. So uh, I wanted time to myself uh, and my family as well. So I decided like that rather than spending time of commuting and spending long hours um, uh, as I was doing in uh, first inning. So I decided for myself to be in corporate for uh, you know, a few hours where I go for doing reporting. Uh, uh, that's and the uh, onquest gave me this freedom okay. that uh, you can come and do reporting and not be there from nine to five. <laughs> Thank you. Now, this this thing that you have said, sir, about you know you wanted time for your hobbies and passion and gardening. So next question is actually based upon that. So much amount of pressure in the medical community right now, whether preclinical, paraclinical, or even the clinical branches. So, a word from you will be very good. Shagun, next question. Yes, sir. So, now that uh, you have illustrated the branch of pathology and unleashed uh, all aspects of it, so, sir, uh, my question before we sign off, although we don't want to, but uh, the what advice you want to give today's generation of doctors? Like, how do they balance their personal life and their professional life in the medical career? Yeah, it's a uh, tough balancing in the beginning, actually. In the initial uh, periods, it's been struggling. All of us have struggled quite a lot. I mean, I'm not going to narrate all that uh, at this forum, but uh, we've struggled a lot uh, in the initial years, uh, you know. Um, with very little, uh, you know, luxuries with us, or which are not luxuries actually in the current time to have a fridge or a scooter. I would say luxury at that time, but nowadays uh, it's different. It took me time to have that, but then I feel so blessed when I look back all these things uh, which we were able to get uh, by struggle and then continue to work hard. Um, I would give due credit to my, uh, uh, you know, companion, my friend, and my wife um, for being with me during struggling time and in the best of time. She um, has seen everything. We've grown up together. We met when we were in early 20s, maybe 21 or so, and um, we are, uh, I shouldn't tell my age at this stage, but, <laughs> but I mean, we um, struggled in the initial period, and um, uh, that's how it went on. And she was a gynecologist, um, and uh, her time uh, was very demanding. You know, a lot of times I would spend a lot, lot more time on my daughters than she could uh, spend time. Um, so there was a time like that. And now she's privileged that she's taken a retirement from professional work and doing just the social work or devoted to music. Um, she enjoys, she had a passion for music and she, uh, you know, pursues that passion really and she's not a passion in But uh, uh, the bottom line, I would say, uh, I never let uh, uh, my uh, home come to my work or my work being brought to home. Uh, 
I think uh, that's important. Hmm. You lose dignity and self-respect if you do that. If you discuss your family affairs or your children and uh, matters pertaining to things about your, um, you know, extended family and all that uh, in your workplace. And ultimately, if you discuss your departmental or institutional affairs back home, puts off your children, puts off others, and they hate uh, to, you know, be a doctor even. <laughs> children will not like to become a doctor. They will not uh, like to follow that profession. They, they, they keep talking about medical profession only at home. So it's best not to bring home to work and work or work to home. Yes. That's how you need to do. Um, yes, it's delicate balancing and um, yeah, you need to do that. The initial periods are a little struggle. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you put in hard work during initial years, they are rewarded. And, uh, you know, it's important, uh, uh, I would say, when you go to work, enjoy doing it. Leave aside all of them. Of course, health issues are important. If somebody is sick at home, then it's a different matter. But enjoy doing your work and give your best. Once you go to the department or an organization, you give your best. Don't be casual. And don't while away your time. Because when you go to work, you go in the best of the presentation form. You shave or you dress well, apply lipstick or, you know, you wear nice iron clothes. And um, you wearing the best outfit. Try to give best also at that time because uh, at home you are spending uh, less time during awake hours compared to the number of awake hours you spend at your workplace and therefore try to give your best i would say um, and when you're home you try to do well again i come to coming to the same try to do well whatever you do so your home don't make your work at home <laughs> that's yes. that's all right Compartmentalization, I think, is the priority right yeah. now. The way we need to create compartments, professional and personal. Right. Sir, any, uh, uh, I mean, uh, of course, we don't want this to end, but we have to. So, any last minute tips or uh, Guru Mantra that you want to give? Now, the numbers are shooting up. So, we have many people who are joining right now. Even some people are messaging that, you know, we've missed some part. So, and don't worry, guys who are listening and watching, we'll be uploading this. You are messaging me again and again. So, we will be uploading this interview. Don't worry. Sir, any tips or Guru Mantra? Many of the budding pathologists and even I could see a couple of clinical pathologists are also there. Well, I think um, uh, to, to sum, sum it up, up I think, I think uh, it's, it's uh, important, important um, to take out uh, some of the things which I said, like, you know, develop uh, passion for your profession, which means enjoy doing what you are doing uh, in workplace, and uh, you will never look back. You will be successful. And, uh, you know, try to put in hard work and whatever assignment of work you're doing, try to do it well at that particular moment, you know. Uh, some, some people are good at multitasking, many are not, but whatever you're doing, try to do it well. Some can do multitasking as well, that's all right, but uh, it's important to do it well, whatever task you're doing. It's better to say no than to do a task casually, I think, uh, is another important uh, uh, life uh, lesson, I would say. And, uh, you know, uh, divide your time properly. You spend time uh, for uh, work, spend time for family. Friends are very important. Your social context, uh, you know, your um, uh, friends and uh, your society is important as well. So you need to interact with them and not be lonely. And do pursue a, a hobby, whatever. Uh, because uh, medical profession is so very stressful. Some people succumb to the pressure of uh, medical studies, whether undergraduates or postgraduates. So it's important to pursue a uh, hobby as well, rather than just uh, studying or reading or working only. Uh, it's important to uh, have a hobby, whatever interests you, whether it's music or dance or gardening or, or cooking or you know reading. 
uh, whatever interests you, it's important to pursue your hobby or games, you know, playing something. Uh, so many things. But uh, I think uh, these are some of the important things uh, which I would say uh, need to be followed uh, to have a balance uh, of your uh, body, mind, and soul. Yes. You know, that's what is important. At the end of the day, I think keeping all three in sync and sane is the most important part. Absolutely. Absolutely true, sir. And I hope that, you know, the coming generations also, I mean, they realize and they don't just fall into the trap and the rat race. So no words are uh, enough to, you know, express our respect for you, the, the, the love that we have for you, the appreciation, the affection. Right from the first phone call that I had with you, it was full of affection, and I could really feel that you know the the person who have been I've been reading for such a long time, and I mean it was kind of overwhelming for me. But the way you took it, uh, you know, in, in a stride that you said, okay, fine, we'll do this interview, not a problem, and we'll do that. I mean that is something which shows that you know at this stature also the humbleness that you have, that the roots that you're attached to. I mean, I just feel blessed to be a part of your society probably now. So thank you so much, sir. And uh, with a heavy heart, I think that we have to bring this towards an end. No words are enough to thank you. As I said, just one promise that please do bless us always. And we're looking forward to have more successful editions of this textbook of pathology. And uh, I just you know wish all the best to you. And I, I feel that it will be uh, my you know destiny that if I get attached to you in any of other things as well. And Shagun would like to uh, sum, it up, sum it up as well. So thank you so much uh, for enlightening all of us and uh, as uh, uh, it is said that no words are enough to thank you sir. Thank you so much. Uh, you have always been a guiding light, a mentor, a teacher, a leader for all of us. So please keep blessing us, keep guiding us because we want to carry forward this beautiful journey of pathology under your supervision. And I don't want this interview to end, but with a, the, like he said, with a heavy heart, we have to end this. But sir, I, I want to uh, uh, request you one thing. Please, please, uh, like if you get time in future, do visit our channel, Pathology Bites. Even a word from you will be more than a book for all of us. And if you come up with some clinical case discussion anytime uh, in future on this channel with us, that would mean, sir, the world for me because uh, you were, you are and you will always be an inspiration to me and to like entire country, all the budding pathologists. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for guiding us always. Uh, you are my guru and as we always say, the pan India guru. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you guys, guys have been wonderful, wonderful and uh, you have been uh, both very enterprising and uh, you've been uh, so active in academics, in running the forum as well as uh, in practice. I think you guys are doing a wonderful job. My best wishes to you. And um, I repeat what I said at the beginning by showing you this. <laughs> And I will always remember this. This uh, silver plate of 2008, which was presented to me during oration from uh, Odisha, where a picture of Balram, Krishna and Subhadra, yes. the two brothers and their sister, is idolized in Jagannath temple uh, at Puri. Uh, you, brother and sister, rock. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thanks to all in the audience. I can see any of you. I can see only myself. Yeah. Uh, probably some uh, image video or whatever. I can see only my picture on the screen. I can see any of you. But obviously, audience, which is the most important component, we, couldn't, uh, we can't see them here. But thanks to everybody who has joined this um, interactive session and they are free to interact with me uh, by any way. I'm available on my email and I, I respond to every mail which I get or every message on Messenger which I get. I respond to that and respect all that which somebody has taken out time to write to me. So I always respond to all that. So, 
uh, all the audience are welcome to interact with me on any of my email is given on all my posts uh, and i'm on facebook and i'm available uh, on uh, whatsapp as well Thank you so much, and wish you all the best. Thank you so much. So, all the listeners and viewers, I will be sharing uh, uh, Dr. Hashmohan's email as well, along with the video, towards the uh -huh. end, and uh, you can access that email ID from there as well. And uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so thank much. You. It's a pleasure for us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. So much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, sir. Good night.